Friday afternoon. Uh, I heard hmm? some hash. No, uh, it looks so like they first, got it. What are hash functions? Uh, a hash function is something that maps data of arbitrary size to data of uh, fixed size. Uh, so as we can see here, see here when we uh, echo a string through SHA1 sum, uh, we get a digest that looks like this. And if we echo a slightly longer string, we still get the same digest length. Uh, and the digests are representing the content that, uh, or the message that produced them. So, and that's sort of the terminology. Uh, the most common terminology, at least, uh, that we have a message uh, that goes through a hash function and that produces a digest. Uh, so, the most common ones of these are MD, uh, MD5, SHA1, and SHA2. And SHA2 includes uh, SHA256 and SHA512, which are pretty common. Uh, so, let's see, use cases for these. Uh, so, one really common use case are hash table lookups. So, uh, like for example, in Ruby, when we have a hash uh, that is keyed by strings or objects or something, uh, these strings and objects are hashed, and the values are put into a table that, are, uh, that is indexed by these uh, hash values. So that makes for really, look, uh, really fast lookups. Uh, so that's, the, I think, the, one of the biggest use cases. But um, then we have three other use cases that are uh, about the, the more cryptographic nature. So we can use these hash functions to verify message integrity. Uh, and that means like if you, for, let's say, download a file and you want to verify that you actually downloaded the file you wanted or the, the file someone published, you can check the hash of that file and see that it, uh, it is the same hash that is published. Uh, it, can also, it can also be used for verifying passwords uh, and for file or data identification. Um, but to uh, be able to do these three things, uh, we have to use cryptographic hash functions. And these are a bit special and have certain properties. So the first property that, that they must uh, satisfy is that they are computationally efficient so that we can generate hash, uh, hashes really quick. Uh, and the second property is that they have to be collision resistant. And that means that uh, it should not be feasible to generate another piece of content that has the same digest as another piece of content. Uh, like, theoretically, this is impossible. Uh, so it has to be unfeasible. Um, and the third property they uh, should have is that they satisfy, satisfy the avalanche property. Uh, so. <laughs> And what, what does that mean? It means that every input bit must affect every output bit. And uh, so the effect of this is that uh, the output, output appears totally random. And a small change in input causes a big change in output. So if we look at the example here, uh, spelling matters and spelling matters mm -hmm. are completely different. Uh, and uh, like the hashes, or digests, they convey nothing at all about the content. We can't figure out uh, like how these strings were different. We can just uh, conclude that they are. Um, so one uh, uh, application that uses, uh, or one system that uses cryptographic hash functions a lot is uh, Git that we use every day. Uh, so in Git, uh, a blob, or like the contents of a file, it's identified by the digest of its content. Uh, and in Git, we also have trees. So every commit has a tree of files that it contains. And these trees are identified by the digest of its subtrees digest, the blob names, and the digest of the blobs. Uh, and a commit is identified by the digest of its metadata, like message and author and stuff like that, and the digest of its tree. So this forms like a... a a tree of hashing. So first you hash the file, you hash the files, and then you hash the files hashes into uh, like a joint hash. And this is called a Merkle tree. Uh, and it's, it's a way to hash a really big data structure uh, one piece at a time. And by just looking at the end hash of the, of the final data structure, you can verify its, its full integrity. 
And that's very, very efficient. Um, so Merkle trees, yeah, they are defined uh, as a tree in which every non-leaf node is labeled with the digest of its children's digest. Um, and it's used in, in uh, file systems like CFS, CFS, and it's used in Bitcoin, and BitTorrent, and React, and Git. So everything that is sort of distributed uh, in a peer-to-peer -peer network uh, uses uh, Merkle trees. Um, so uh, I, I wanted to give this talk because I'm, I was sort of fascinated by these hash functions. They, they seemed sort of magical to me. So I wanted to explore uh, like how they work. And uh, so the, the hash functions I'm going to show are not cryptographic uh, since they do not satisfy the avalanche property. So uh, you should not use these <laughs> for protecting your stuff. Uh, <laughs> So this is the absolute simplest uh, hash function, and it only works on integers, which is kind of sucky. But <laughs> so in here, we force an integer into a range. Uh, so say we wanted to use a table for storing integers. We can get the row for storing that, in, uh, that integer by using this hash function. So uh, like you see here, it produces uh, sort of a hash of this integer. Uh, it has some problems though. Uh, it has quite a lot of collisions. So uh, actually everything that ends in 50 will have the hash 50. It's not very good. Um, <laughs> so uh, it's insufficient for uh, the two reasons that it only supports integers and that it's, uh, it has quite a high risk of collisions. Um, the second simplest hashing function is the additive hashing function. So this is uh, one of the functions you can see in textbooks, and uh, the the good things uh, about uh, the good thing about this is that it supports strings. So uh, we take every character or every byte in this string, uh, and we add them all together to a big integer, and then we force this integer into a range. So uh, this produces different values for for different strings, uh, but as you can see, it has some, some problems as well. Uh, it is not very collision uh, resistant, uh, and it's uh, insufficient since it does not handle permutations, like, because uh, addition is a commutative uh, operator, so it doesn't really matter from uh, which direction you add stuff together. So ABC is the same as CBA. It's not, not very good. Um, so. The, the minimal acceptable algorithm for a hash function is, is this, and this is the rotating hash. So, uh, yeah, it ended up on one line, that's good. <laughs> uh, so in here, we, uh, we add stuff together in a way. Uh, so we sort of fold the data together using XOR and some shifting. So. Uh, there's also an XOR function that does not do the shifting, but since XOR is also commutative, uh, that would not work. So we have to shift our uh, integers a bit. So we loop over every character uh, in this string and convert it to uh, an integer, and then we uh, uh, we have like uh, we build up a value, and every time we iterate, we uh, shift the value with four and to, to the left, and then we shift it with 28 to the right. We XOR that together with the number we're currently on, and then we iterate to the next round. Uh, so this, this actually produces pretty good results. So A is 97, AB is 50, ABC is 35, and CBA is 21. So this actually supports permutations, which is, which is good. So uh, when you look at uh, the hash functions we use every day, like SHA-1, that's used in Git, uh, it uses a combination of uh, adding, shifting, XORing stuff together. Uh, so, but it's, it's, it's essentially just a loop like this. You just change like, the operations that, that happens inside of there uh, to a more <laughs> elaborate version that is more uh, collision efficient or collision resistant than this one. Yeah, that's it. Thanks a lot.